to actually see them work. It was, it was incredible. I videotaped it. That's when you know you're old. You know you're old. When you get new gunners and you videotape watching the water run up and down spout. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. It's a great life. It's really exciting. But hey, we're... What's that? You're old when you call it videotape. Yes. Yes, you can go to kids' ministry, you know. Oh, yes. I put it on a VHS. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And I play my music on an 8-track. Oh. Some of you are like, what's an 8-track? Yeah, he, yeah, I figured you did. you got to go back and check it out. It's great music. Everybody know what a record is? Like vinyl? Yeah, come on. Yeah, you had vinyl, then you had 8-tracks. It was beautiful. Then you had, if you go back to Julian's day, you had reel to reel. Reel to reel. Come on. But, uh, it's a lot of fun, so hey, thanks for being here this morning. My name is Tracy, and I'm one of the pastors here. It's great to be here. We are real people. This is a safe place for you to come and discover God. And we believe that the Bible teaches truth, and that truth answers and deals with our real issues. We're real people with real issues, and we're finding real hope in Jesus. And that hope is what changes everything. Doesn't matter what we say, how we do it. It all matters when Jesus shows up and he changes somebody's life. So we've been praying for this day that you're here and God's going to do something in your life. He's going to do something in my life. So welcome to Grace River Church. It's going to be a great day. I'm going to invite uh, Madison and Cynthia. They're going to come give you some uh, vision casting of what's happening here at Grace River Church. Would you welcome these ladies? Good morning, y'all. How are you today? That wasn't convincing at all. Um, good morning. Welcome to Grace River. We're so happy you're here. We have a couple things going on in the church. So happening next Sunday is going to be one of our all-church breakfasts. It's a little potluck kind of thing. So bring whatever you can. Bring a friend. Not to eat. But, you know, for food, bring a friend to enjoy company with. It's going to be a great time. It'll be happening at 9 o'clock. So please... Bring yourself, eat a lot of food, get to know people before service starts. Yes, and I don't know about you guys, but I feel like worship hits a little bit differently when your stomach is at peace and full of food. It's true, it might just be me. But, <laughs> um, and so for women, we are having um, next Saturday on the 20th at downtown at the Bake Shop, we are having our monthly women's ministry. And so this is a personal invite. If you're a woman, 18 and over, please join us. It doesn't matter if it's your first time here or if you guys have never even been to a meeting, I think we have a lot of fun. Am I correct? Yes. 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 Okay. Um, and so, yes, the place is called Bake Shop. And so just, you can bring a friend, you can bring yourself, bring your Bible. We're going to be going over Esther, which is just a one personal favorite of mine. And she's right. These women meets are the best you get to connect. And the Bake Shop, I've been there. You will get full, and it'll be great. You'll get full on Jesus and on baked goods. So what's better? Um, happening in a couple weeks on the first, immediately after service, is going to be a lunch with our pastors. So if you're new here and you want to get connected, you kind of want to get to know our story a little bit more, you like how it feels in service, but you just want to know us a little bit more, that lunch is going to be happening on May 1st after service. You can get to know our pastors, ask them a little bit about their story, we'll get to know yours. It'll just be a great time. So if you want to register, go out to the hub, find Shannon, register on the app, we will get you connected. And then on Tuesday, we have our very first corporate prayer night. So exciting. And so it says in Psalms 141-2, may my prayer come to you like the sweet smell of incense. When I lift up my hands in prayer, may it be like evening sacrifice. And so we should be praying daily, but there's just something when you come with people who have a like mind and a like heart, and you just get to pray with one another, the Lord moves. And so it's just a beautiful fragrant incense onto the Lord. And so that will be on the um, Tuesday, April 16th at 6 o'clock at Madison's house. Um, and so if you guys can register in the app, and then we have Miss Joyce and Jasmine over here. You can raise your hands. If you guys have any questions of where exactly that's at, you guys can go and meet with them. It'll be a great time. So if you're part of the prayer ministry, you want to get into it, please join. It's going to be a great time. I'm especially excited because I get to help out with it. It's my first time, so get to praise the Lord. So if you all would like to stand to your feet now, we're going to go into a time of worship, but I'm going to pray us in really quick. So Lord, I just thank you for bringing us here today. I thank you for filling the seats in here that are full, and even those that are empty, I thank you for filling them with your spirit. I pray that God, we would just get to worship you and come together with you in this time, and in your mighty name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 
Amen, amen. All right, well, you guys are good. You're already on your feet. Bible says that the way you enter God's presence is with thanksgiving and praise. And so we're going to start with that today. Sound good, church? Yeah. All right, here we go.
but you both the Holy Spirit, right? Right? Yeah, all right. Good morning. Welcome to Grace River. As you can tell, we are a fun church up in here. My two best friends in this church did not want to be a part of that, and I forced them to it. They got voluntold what to do, just like I did. So welcome to Grace River. I'm so glad we're here. If this is your first time, welcome. This is us. And if it is your first time, Please fill out that welcome card, go out to the dock. We just want to bless you, give you a first time gift, get you to come back. And if it's your second time, same thing. Oh my gosh, I'm so out of breath. That's exhausting. I don't know why I used to cheer for so long. If it is your second time, again, fill out that card, go out to the dock. We want to bless you with another gift. And if this is your third time, we feel extra special. We bribed you, we got you to come back with the Holy Spirit. You decided this was your home church. And you just want to keep getting to know us. Well, we are so happy about that. Keep coming back. Keep praising. Get to know us. Download our app. Follow us on Instagram. Follow us on Facebook. Just get connected so we can get to know you a little bit more. I'm going to invite Mr. Mike up here. So, thank you, guys. Hey, good morning, everybody. How are you? Great. Good. Great to see you this morning. So glad you're in God's house. It's a great day to always to be in the Lord's house, right? He invites us to gather together, to be together, because there's power in community. Yes. And when we come with one thought and one mind, God does incredible things. And so we are so glad that you are here. Uh, at this port of the service, we talk about giving here. We are a member-driven church. Thank you for those of you who continue to give. If you are a guest here today, please do not get your wallet out. You are here on us. We don't want your money. We don't need your money. It all belongs to God. We operate on that premise, and yes. that's why we give it. Because yeah. we want to make a difference here, and we want to make a difference around the world. Yeah. So there are ways to give here through the box. There are ways to give online. We also, if you see in the corner, there's a sign there called Kingdom Builders. For those of you that, that God has blessed, we invite you to take the next step and to provide resources for people that we can reach in the city and literally around the world. When Jesus sent them out, he said... Start close to home, but before you get done, get the whole world. Yeah. And that's why we do what we do. So thank you for your generosity and all the things that you do. Let me just pray over the giving, and then Pastor Tracy is going to come with the next piece. God, thank you for the opportunity to give. A lot of people telling us how to make millions of dollars. Lots of great investment advice today. And a lot of people have gone broke. In my own life, God... I've never come up short when I partnered with you. In fact, even when I didn't have enough, you always made sure there was more than enough. So we trust you today. Thank you for the opportunity to give in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Mike. All right. Um, I don't know if you understand what happens on a weekly basis here at Grace River Church, but on a weekly basis, there's probably 30 people that help make this all happen and serve. And we highlight people every once in a while. And so today I want to highlight our Faithful Friday servant. So I need uh, Misty Lawrence. I, she may be outside. If you can grab Misty and bring her on up here. She is our, our Faithful Servant Friday for this month. Come on up here, Misty. And she loves to be on the platform and she loves people to shout her name and give her all kinds of kudos. But um, uh, Misty, She serves faithfully at, at our welcome dock, along with our, with our greeters and our setup, on our our, food, our breakfasts. And now, what I love about Missy is her and her whole family serve. This is their this is a family that serves the Lord. And so, I just want to say how much I appreciate you. Um, I know when we we transitioned over here. We started pushing you out of your comfort zone. And uh, yeah. she, she's really an introvert. And so we put her at the welcome dock because we like introverts. We just say, oh, God does crazy things. Yeah. But I see you coming out of that. Yeah. Uh, I see how you love people well. You interact with people well. We couldn't be Grace River Church without Misty Lawrence. So yeah. you all stand with me on the panel with Misty this morning. Um, and uh, just be watching. We we uh, we want to honor people because uh, God is about people, 
He's not just about church. He's about people. And so I'm grateful. Lord, thank you today for Missy. I thank you for the gifts that you've given her and the anointing that's on her. Lord, I thank you for her smile that when we walk through the door, um, and how she loves people well. And Lord, I just pray you would continue to grow her, strengthen her. Lord, may you provide everything she needs. I thank you for the Lawrence family who serves so faithfully here at Grace River Church. I pray blessings over her, and we give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. So we're now going to take 120 seconds. I want you to find somebody you've never met before. Ask them their bank account, their PIN number, whatever information you can get from them. But would you take 120 seconds to connect with people around you? germs to myself. So, um, would you stand with us this morning? We're getting ready to go back into a time of worship. Does everybody have their communion elements? Everybody get a communion element. Now, now some of you are wondering, like, we just did communion last week. We did I've been on this journey with the Lord, um, and I've had different people in my life who talk to me about the importance and the power of communion. And I've had people say that, you know, they do it every time they get together, every time they gather. Um, and the, the Bible, honestly, the Bible doesn't say, there's nowhere in the Bible that says the frequency of when you should do communion. It doesn't say every time you meet or the first Sunday or the third Sunday. Or, it doesn't say any of that. What the Bible does tell us is that every time we do this, we do this in remembrance of what God has done for us, what Jesus did for us. Yeah. And so as I prayed through that, and as I talked to different people, and I read different scriptures and passages about in the New Testament with the new church, the, the Church of Christ, um, how they, when they came together, they would break bread. And I just felt like, Lord, I want to honor you. So th this is this is about honoring the Lord. It's like, it's a refocus. As we get ready to go into worship, this is just a matter of refocusing our eyes on Jesus and who he is and what he has done for us through the cross and the shedding of his blood. 
It's also a time just to renew our commitment with Him. It's a time of repentance. And so we're going to start taking communion and worshiping the Lord with communion on a weekly basis. Because I believe it, it prepares our hearts for what He wants to do. It prepares us to receive from Him through worship, through the Word, through His truth. And so this morning, as we get ready to partake, we're not every week, we're not going to take a long time in it. We're just going to get right to it. Okay? But I just want to give some explanation. And then, you know, there will be times that we spend time and we set and we just take in the communion elements. But the Bible says that his body was bruised and broken for us. And that his blood was shed for our salvation. That there could be no forgiveness of sins without the shedding of blood. And so this morning we remember that. Lord, I thank you for your body that was broken and bruised. Lord, I know there's people that need healing this morning. Lord, I pray over Miss Cheryl's eye. Lord, she needs a healing touch from you this morning. Lord, there's others that need touches from you, Lord. Lord, I don't feel good. Touch my body. Lord, you are, are the creator of my body. You're the creator of our bodies. You, 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 you put us together. So, Lord, I pray that, Lord, you would touch those who need a healing this morning. We thank you for your sacrifice. Let's partake of the bread together. Lord, this morning we thank you for your blood. We thank you that we all stand here redeemed because of the blood of the Lamb. So, Lord, this morning we honor you. We refocus our hearts on you as we get ready to worship you. Lord, we come before you with repentant hearts, thankful for your shedding of your blood. So, Lord, uh, renew us. Receive our, our worship this morning. Let's partake of the cup. I'm going to invite our prayer team. They're going to come. We're going to go back into a time of worship. If you need prayer, they're here available. If you just want to come to this altar, you want to kneel before the Lord in prayer, we want you to come. But we want to honor God this morning. We want to, We know he's here. We know his presence is here. And when Jesus shows up, everything changes. So let him change you this morning. Let's worship this morning.
tear down the idols, but it's actually a partnership. He's looking for He's looking for the church who will say, show me my idols. Show us where I have an idol so that I might tear it down. And so Holy Spirit, even right now as we continue to sing, would you reveal, bring to mind even just one area where I didn't know it was an idol. I didn't know I was going to this instead of coming to you. I didn't know that I was being satisfied over here instead of looking to you. Show me. Because when I sing this, I want it to be a partnership. That I'm tearing down the idol and I'm saying, God, would you help me to tear down the idol? Give me the grace and the strength and the power so that you alone, King Jesus, might sit on the throne of my life. That you, King Jesus, you sit alone on the throne of this church. Yes, Jesus. something this morning and I'm not sure how theological it is. The Lord dropped something in my heart but I'm basing it on some other scriptures and I've been in this intense time this month. My daughter and wife and I have been on this challenge of no television and no social media. This is day 14 and so yeah so, so I read the Bible quite a bit and people give me a hard time about that but I would just tell you to think of it this way. Maybe I needed it. That's why I read it so much. Yes. That's yes, the actual yes. truth. And so God's just been opening my heart and opening my heart to things. And, and sometimes we don't fully understand when it comes time to worship really the power and the gravity of why we should worship Him. Because we're going through life. you got stuff going on. You're trying to be married, raise kids, work, get ahead, pay taxes Monday. Yes. yes. Decide who's going to run the country better for you than you can run it yourself. But the Lord dropped something in my heart this morning, and I base it on two passages of Scripture. One is in Hebrews. The Bible says that now that we have a high priest, there is the opportunity to come to a place of rest. There is still a place of rest for the people of God. Okay. There's another passage where the Lord says, Cast your cares on me, yes. for he cares for you. Yes. 
Yeah. And he yeah. says, take my burden, yeah. uh -huh. which is light, yeah. and give me your junk. Yeah. Okay. So here's what the Lord dropped in my heart, and I'm going to have to work on this. But it's a thought for today. Can we go with that? Uh, there's a scripture that says that we need to pick up our cross and carry it. Yes. And we often think about the work of carrying our cross. The reality is there's nothing on our cross. <laughs> Jesus paid for it. He paid for the sin. He paid for the shame. He died for it all. And he says, if you'll just pick it up and rest in me, you can be the man I've called you to be. You can be the woman that I've called you to be. You can be the person that I've called you to be. Because I've already paid. It's just a piece of wood. The death is in his body. He shed his blood. He gave it all. And he says, you can do this. Pick it up and follow me. I've already done the heavy lifting. You need clarity of mind, he'll bring it. You need a touch, he's already paid for it. He says, just receive it. Just come get it. Cast it all on me, I've already taken it. And you just follow me. So you see him being a little bit more worthy than maybe you walked in today? He can bring favor that nobody else can bring in your life. He can bring a promotion that you never expected. And he can change the heart of your child who is running in a moment where you've been begging them for years. He's a good God. And he's worthy to be worshipped. Let's think about that again as we sing this song. He is worthy of it all. You. 
Lord, we cast everything on you today. Lord, we even cast those things that you say you know that we don't know. It says you know everything we need before we ask. Thank you. We don't know what's happening today, what's happening tomorrow, what's happening this week, but you do. And so, Lord, you're not just worthy of what I know. <laughs> you're worthy to carry me through what I don't know. So today, as we discuss the armor, may we be reminded that we're never uncovered, we're never alone, and we're never protected. But we have everything we need. And we can rest in Jesus in all our efforts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Hey, if that was good this morning, high five your neighbor before you have a seat this morning. Hey, I'm going to switch them out. All right. I did not test this mic. Hopefully it works this morning. How is everybody today okay? Yes. It's been a great morning already. We could go home and it'd be a great day. I heard a guy preach one time though, and their uh, church had a, uh, they ate food every every week after church, and he said, there ain't no bird if there ain't no word. He says, no lunch time we go to the birds. <laughs> Promises. Hey, if you were not here last week, we started this series. Am I on? Am I breaking up? You did not pass the test. How about now? Okay. This is how the Lord tests me because I like to use my hands. That's why I like a mic. Because I do this. Hey, hey, hey. All right. So we are on a series called The Armor of God. And for this last week, you should go listen, Pastor Tracy. Great uh, uh, job opening up the series and made this very profound point is that we can't fight on our own. God didn't equip us to fight the devil on our own. He equips us to partner with him in the battle. But the battle belongs to the Lord. Do you know why you're so valuable to God? Because you're the prize. When you're winning, heaven rejoices and hell mourns. And when you're losing the battle, hell rejoices and the Father mourns. That's why you're so valuable to him. The problem is, is our culture, our society, and our circumstances begin to have us begin to doubt and question our value. And if we don't understand our value and our worth, we'll never live up to our potential. And you are valuable to God. You matter to God. He formed you and fashioned you for purpose and for his goodness. And until that sinks in, life can be miserable. So as we go into the armor of God, I want to refresh you on kind of five topics we talked about last week. And so this message is kind of like a roller coaster. Um, I sent the notes to Pastor Tracy on Friday, and there are three more pages since Friday. So it's going to kind of be like going up the hill. It's be like, chug, 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 chug. What is this thing going to get going? And then we're going to hit the top. So the first part's going to be a little information, and I hope the second part's going to be impartation. All right? So we're going to move from knowledge to a move of God. Hopefully it's going to change your life. Five things that the, the passage introduces to us, five thoughts. The first thing that it says is to be strong. Be strong. Now, that word strong actually means be strengthened. It's not a one-shot deal. It's a constant peace. If I am a professional fighter, if I am a military person, if I am a professional athlete, I don't go out one day and practice and I'm ready for the rest of my life. I practice, I play, I practice, I play, I practice, I play. It is my career. I don't do it 25 minutes on Sunday. Once a week. Every day. Every day. The second thing is it's in Christ's might. You don't do anything outside of Christ. The third requires some effort on our part because it says put on. It doesn't say fall into, walk by and hope it falls on you. Put it on. Number three, it says we wrestle. Wrestle is a close contact sport. You sweat on each other. You smell somebody's armpits when you wrestle. And maybe some other parts. A little graphic, but hey. 
<laughs> Wrestling with the devil is stinky. He tries to, to mess up your life and bring the stink in that Christ is trying to get off you. The last one is, it says, stand firm. It doesn't say advance, but it says don't retreat. Stand firm, don't get pinned, don't retreat, don't let the enemy advance. Because what happens is we start our journey here. We come to Christ and as we move forward, the devil is always trying to push us back. He says, stand firm. And when we get to the place and he comes, we stand. We don't give up ground. We don't go running back. We, we keep ground. Yeah. Yeah. And the devil is not eternal. He is temporary. He comes for a moment. He says, you resist him, he has to flee. Yeah. So he comes for a moment. So I stand. And then I advance. And he comes again and I stand. I'll hold the line. That's good. It's like those guys uh, that you see that, that are over the, the castle over in England, right? You ever see those guys that just stand there and people come up and they do all kinds of nonsense to try and get them to stairs? That's the picture of our faith in Christ. I stand. I am firmly planted in Christ and I'm not going back. Yeah. Yeah. I might have a few wounds because I'm wrestling. I might get injured. I might get stabbed, but I'm not going down. And even if I do, I'm jumping right back up because I'm not fighting a own strength. Uh -huh. So I don't retreat. Okay, so to stand. All right. So our part this week is the belt of truth. So Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Yeah. So let's talk about some physical characteristics of the belt of truth, and they're going to be on your screen. <laughs> the first thing is this, this uh, belt was kind of like a leather girdle, right? So you, you got to realize that that the military men of that time or that day, men wore uh, kind of like a tunic or a t-shirt or think of a kilt, right? They didn't wear pants and, and things like we see today. It was basically almost like a dress. So they would have a girdle, and the reason they had this leather girdle is it would protect the upper legs, the waist, the lower midsection. It provides support to the back, and it would hold in the breastplate of righteousness. And then the sword of the Spirit was actually not a big sword. It was actually a small sword because it's hand-to-hand. -hand. It's a wrestling contest. It's not a, a 400-mile drone attack. It's a wrestling contest. So everything would be tucked into this thing. The two important things were is that when the battle came, the, the, the greatest part of the belt is they would tuck the tunic in and they would wrap the belt around it so that they would have freedom of movement and freedom to fight. Because if not, it would get in the way. And the last thing is... When the belt was fastened, it was on like Donkey Kong. It is time to fight. Yeah. When they were around the place eating, the belt was off. But when the belt was on, the battle yeah. was on. So when it was fastened, it was time. Now, the great thing about God is he never gives us anything that's not proven. The armor of God didn't just show up in Ephesians. It's been all the way throughout the Bible. In fact, if you go all the way back to Exodus and you go all the way back to the Passover, when the children of Israel were heading for liberation, God said, get your food together and strap your belt on. We are going to the promised land. All right. And then in Isaiah, there's multiple, multiple prophecies that Christ would be, he would have righteousness, I'll be the belt of his loins and faithfulness, the belt of his waist. And there's other references there. You can go see the other parts as we move into the series. So the armor that God gives us is not, man, I hope this works. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. That's right. It's not like going to the doctor where they practice medicine on you, right? Oh, that, oh, that other one doesn't work. Try this one. All right. Four spiritual truths tied to this belt. Four spiritual truths. The first one is the truth of Christ. John 14, 6 says this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. The second spiritual truth that we gain from the belt of truth is the Bible. 2 Timothy 2, 15 says, Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Uh, let me take a commercial. Is this on the app? Yes. Okay. I see some of you taking pictures. It's on the app. So if you're on there, you can go find that. All right, number three, the truth is tied to our faith. As Jesus is getting ready to exit the earth in John 17, verse 15 and 17, he says, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, Jesus speaking about you and I, 
but you should keep them from the evil ones. Sanctify them by your truth, for your word is truth. And the last piece, truth represents the church. 1 Timothy 3.15, the second part of the verse says this, I write so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourselves in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of... Huh. Anybody got a theme going on? The belt of truth. Okay. So what the enemy does is he comes to us in the form of lies. The Bible says that he is a liar. He's always been a liar. He likes to skirt around the truth. He likes to bend the truth. And the greatest place that he bends the truth is in this little thing right here. The battle of the mind. That's why in Scripture it says be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, so the enemy comes in. So there's two lies that he likes to tell us about. Number one are lies about God. And number two is lies about you. Those are the two greatest weapons. If he can get you to not think about God or discount God, he's got you. And if he can begin to have you discount yourself, he's got you. So the two places that God has. Now, that's the last of the notes. I'm sorry, we're at the pinnacle now. So the rest you're just going to have to pay attention. Okay. The Bible says that God is a God of order. And I don't believe that anything in Scripture is written by accident. And I don't believe that the way it's written by the author is random. I believe God designed it that way. So the first thing that I want you to understand is this. Why is the first piece of armor the belt of truth? Why not the breastplate of righteousness? Why not the helmet of salvation? These are the questions I ask. I'm weird. When I read this, I go, there's all... Why can't I put the helmet on first, God? All right, are you ready? Because there's a biblical truth, right? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Yes. You sure? Mm -hmm. All right, if you have a Bible close by, I'm sorry I don't have this on the screen. John 1.17 says this, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Now here's the power. That grace and truth in our English, is two words. In the Greek, it is one word. Grace and truth are together. When Jesus came, the truth is grace came. And without grace, there is no righteousness. And without grace, there is no salvation. And without grace, there is no peace. And without grace, there is no release of the Holy Spirit in the earth. And without grace, there is the proclamation of the word because it has no power without grace. So the belt of truth holds it all together and sets us free. And that's what Jesus did when he died for you. He holds you together and he set you free when he died on the cross and rose again. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Now, truth is interesting because it has layers really does. And it has layers in our theology and in our culture. If you ever talk to people about, I love talking to people about the Bible because I read it a lot and most people don't. I just got to talk to them for a few minutes and I know they don't read it. So truth has a few layers. Number one, the Bible is available to everybody. You can go online, you go to most bookstores, you go to the hotel, they're everywhere. Everybody has the capability to read the Bible. The first layer of truth that most people wrestle with is this, this term, I feel. Mm -hmm. After reading the Bible, this is how I feel. Our culture is trying to change the truth because it just doesn't feel good. A lot of people that I talk to about living right, they like to bring up some story from some ancient culture 8 million years ago who said that was okay. So I feel that it's okay to live that way in 2024 in America. I feel. That's how I feel. Then what happens is when you come to know Jesus, the Bible says the Holy Spirit comes to you. And when you begin to read through the Spirit, what begins to happen is you move from feeling and you start thinking. Because God is working on the little cabeza here. 
Yeah. He's trying to turn that little spiritual pea brain into a powerhouse. Yeah. So we begin to think, hmm, maybe, maybe, maybe there's something to that thing. Maybe I do need to try and give some money and see what happens. Maybe I do need to walk in forgiveness. Maybe. But the third layer of truth actually comes as we go deeper into this series and it talks about the sword of the Spirit and praying in the Spirit because there's a new word of the Holy Spirit revealed. When Jesus comes, He is the written word or the logos. In this passage, there's a rhema word. Rhema is when I have reached truth. Because what happens is I no longer feel, I no longer think, I know, and because I know, I declare. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I know. You, you can come at me all you want. You can say this. You can tell me that. You can say it's culture. You can say all this nonsense about the past. But I know that I know that I know that it is true because I have lived it. I have experienced. Yeah. God has demonstrated it. And you yeah. can't change my mind. That's, right. That's, good. That's truth. You got somebody who really believes something? I don't care what you do. You can take their head and slam it on this thing for hours. Like, nope, not going to change. But you have a strong little child? Right? Those strong little ones right there, the hard ones to spank. You're like, spank them and like, that all you got? I can do this all day. Right, Tracy? Oh, I'm going <laughs> to... Okay, so truth comes in these layers. All right, now, when Jesus fought the devil and the devil came at Jesus, he wasn't silent. He was silent when he was accused by men. He didn't pray. He declared. He declared. The devil came at Jesus and Jesus declared the word because he knew it. He declared. He didn't go, whatever you want to say, man, I'll just I'll wait till you're done. No, no. Every time the devil spoke, he came back with a declaration yes. of truth. Amen. Okay. Yeah. So the way that we fight the devil is not by how we feel. All right. It's not by what we think. It's by diving in deep and knowing what we know, and we stand on it, and we say there's no going back. Amen. No going back. All right, so I need Jeff Kimber for a minute. I'm going to do a demo right here, real quick. Now, don't hurt me, I'm fragile. Don't hurt me. All right, so what happens in a wrestling match, there is contact. Hold on. So I want to show you kind of a, a spiritual thought to wrestling with the devil because it is a, it is a close con. He is in your brain. He is in your mind. He's trying to shake you up. He's trying to, he's trying to take you to the mat. Right? He doesn't come in and go, oh, you know, let's just... That. No, no. He, he's coming for you. The Bible says he wants to kill you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to take all that you got. He wants to leave you alone. In fact, if he had his way, he would tell you to take your life. And he would be okay. Because that's how valuable you are to God, and He knows it. Yes. Yeah, that's for somebody who's wrestling with yes. you yes. yes. have any value. Okay, so what happens is when we wrestle with the devil, so if the devil gets me in a chokehold, okay. yeah. <laughs> not, 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 not too hard, right? No, no. <laughs> Jeff's done this before. All right. I was wondering what those bruises were around Christina's neck. <laughs> So when the devil comes, i got three choices. Because the devil comes to me and says, you know what? Um, all those sins, you can never be forgiven. And so I have three choices. Number one is I let him take me down and he pins me. And I'm right back worse than I started. I'm deeper in porn than I've ever been. I'm deeper in debt than I've ever been. Uh, my marriage is more crashed than it's ever been crashed. Come on. The second one that we try is we try and tap out. To the, to the person at the buckle out there. Where's Pastor Tracy when I need him? It ain't Sunday at 1030. It's Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock. <laughs> We're looking for somebody who knows something. Wow. Yeah. Wow. 
But when we know, and the devil comes and says, you can never be saved, we declare, with man it's impossible, but with God all things are possible. All things are possible. And the Bible says that when we resist, when we fight back, he has to flee. And so he runs away and he goes and finds somebody else and he waits for another moment. Thanks, Jeff. Run away. Yeah, run now. Thanks for being a good sport. Yeah. Okay, so, so there is there is part now. Now this is not word of faith where I name it and claim it. I need a new mansion. Send me a mansion. This is the confidence that I know that God has made me who I am, what I am to be. I have purpose. I have destiny. I can be a great dad in spite of who I am. My wife can be the greatest wife in spite of who she is. Our kids can be great no matter what happens. God can turn a situation. It's not because I just feel good or I think good or I'm a great motivational speaker. I know what I know because throughout history, He has changed moments. Yes. 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 With one word and one action. Okay. So are you ready? Here we go. Let's, let's do a little action. A little practice. So you will. Culture brings a lie to us and says, God is not real. Truth says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Mm -hmm. The lie. God is mad at you. Eight different authors in the Old Testament at different periods who did not know each other write one sentence that is almost exactly the same. The Lord is compassionate and gracious and slow to anger and abundant in loving kindness and truth. Lie. God is silent. He doesn't want to have conversation with you. Truth. The spirit of truth will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to come. He will glorify me. For he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Well, that God you serve is impersonal. Oh, no, no. Behold, you desire truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden part, you will make me know wisdom. God is dead and we all die. Truth. I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me, he shall never die. Do you believe this? Yes. Yes. See, you have to be convinced of who you are. If not, the devil will rip you apart. That's why you feel like you're making progress. And all of a sudden you're like, man, I thought I whipped this thing. And you're back. You're back. So let's talk about truths about us. Because these are the ones we really struggle with. How about this lie? God does not care about you. Truth says, Lord, you know my sitting down and my rising up. You understand my thought afar off. You comprehend my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. For you formed my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. And in your book, they were all written my days that were fashioned before you when there was none of them ahead. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. How great is the sum of them all. Yes. Yes. How about this one? You have no purpose. Truth says, for you are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that you should walk in them. Mm -hmm. Or this one, I I just can't come back. I'm unsavable. God can never save me. Truth says, who then can be saved? Jesus said, with men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Yeah. yeah. You know what, Pastor? I, 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 there's no way that I can ever, that God could ever just not punish me. Hmm. Truth. But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us much more than having now been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Yes. Thank you. 
last one. I could never get rid of this bondage. I'm going to have it the rest of my life. Truth. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you are free. Indeed. You are. The Son makes you free. Yes. You are free. Yes. Indeed. I'm going to invite the worship team to come back. Sure. i got a few more of these that I want to do in just a minute. We're going to do a little kind of old-fashioned altar call this morning. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. As the worship team begins to play. If you feel like you're losing the battle, some area of your life, I'm just going to invite you to come down here. I'm going to I'm have you join me and do something at the end of this song. But I want you to just come, just begin in a reverent moment, bow your head, just begin to talk to the Lord, just you and Him. And then when we're done with this song, I want to take you through uh, just kind of an exercise to get you to think and to get you to understand the necessity to strike that belt of truth on if you want to succeed in your life. Come on. Nobody, nobody is safe from the attacks of the enemy. Amen. No one. You might be doing all right now, but a day's coming. That's right. If you look throughout the Bible, people who thought they were living in righteousness, the devil would go to God and say, I want that one. I want Job. Give me Noah. It was their truth that took them to the end. So this morning, as they begin to sing, if you feel you're losing the battle, I want you to come on. Right down here, enjoy me. I'm going to pray with you in just a minute. Don't sit in your seat and go, I'll just figure it out. That's the greatest tool the devil uses. I'll take care of it tomorrow. I'll take care of it later. The Bible says that when you are confronted by the Spirit of God, today is the day of salvation. Respond today. You don't, you don't have any guarantees of tomorrow. Father, you know who needs to heed this call this morning. Give them the courage. Give them the courage. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
and it was a sign of allegiance. One of the things I want you to see this morning <laughs> if this represents the cross right here, if this represents the cross, Jesus wore the armor of God throughout every community and every city. And he healed and he restored and he brought purpose and he demonstrated its power. And when he went to the cross, he said, I know what you're carrying. You give that to me. And he literally took that pain. He took that sin. He took that shame. He took it in his body. He let the devil kill him and literally take him to hell. And on his way out the door, he left his armor at the cross. He said, all who would come and strap this baby on, it's for you. It carries all my power. It carries my truth. It carries my righteousness. It carries my grace. It carries my mercy. It carries my strength. But you don't get it without Jesus. Without Jesus. So this morning, I'm going to invite you to pray this with me this morning. The warrior's prayer of allegiance to the Lord Jesus. Here we go. See, the greatest lie that the enemy tells us is this. There are multiple ways to God. Anybody can get to God. You can, you can be nice. You can give money. The Bible declares this. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus gets his words. In Acts, the Apostle Paul, the most religious man in history. There is no other name given under heaven by which men might be saved. Timothy, the young evangelist, would write, For there is no God, there, there is one God, one mediator between God and men, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom to all to be testified in due time. And Philippians says this, At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, and every tongue shall confess. Yes. yes. Jesus is Lord yes. to the glory of God. Come on. Come on. So if you're in the fight, I'm asking you to take a knee. Come on. If you want to fight, if you can physically do it, thank you, Sister Joyce. If not, put your hands on your knees and pray for him. God will heal you. You got to be back in the battle. We need her in the battle. Amen. Pray this with me. God, I pledge allegiance to you. Because of what you did for me with Jesus. This morning, I'm grateful. All my pain, all my sin, all my shame, everything that I'd ever like erased has been erased in Jesus. I receive His 
payment. To his payment. I receive, I receive eternal, life. eternal life. Today, Today. I, put on the armor. I put on the armor. I literally put on the armor. Yes. And I declare, and I declare in, a in a public forum that I will stand. And I will stand. And when I don't feel like standing, I will stand. And I will continue to stand. No more does the devil get ground in my mind, in my heart, in my soul, in my body, in my family, in my church, in my community, and everywhere that you see me. I'm in until the day you take me home. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Hey, if you meant that this morning, declare it with all your might. Declare it with all your might. Get from the feeling to the thinking to the knowing who you are. So much value you have. That's why God went through all of this to declare to you today the greatness of his mercy and goodness to you. That you can win in this life. You can win the battle. You can stand strong in the day no matter what culture says. No matter what they say is okay. No matter what they legislate. Truth is truth. And Jesus is Lord of all.
We will not back down. We will not give up territory. In Jesus' name and all God's people greet and say. Amen. Amen. Wow. I'm telling you, folks, when we get into the presence of the Almighty God, He shifts the atmosphere of our lives. Right? Everything changes. Everything changes. I've been reading, I started a, reading a book this week called uh, Don't Give the Enemy a Seat at Your Table. I think our young adults did this a while back. Don't give a, the enemy a seat at your table. Psalms 23 talks about he prepares a table in the presence of our enemy. He doesn't say that the enemy's at your table. Stand your ground because you have authority. He doesn't get a seat at your table. Stand your ground. Speak truth. Because he's going to come at you with all the lies. He's going to... Some of you got freedom this morning. Some of you got delivered this morning. Some of you experienced victory this morning. And guess what? By the time you hit La Perea today, the enemy's going to lie to you. I'm serious. Probably by the time you get to that stoplight, it takes forever to make a left-hand turn. The enemy's going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you, oh, that wasn't, yeah, that, oh, you felt good. Oh, that was a good feeling, right? You went to the altar, you shed a few tears. Oh, that felt good. This isn't about feeling good. This is about the truth of God's word that changes your life. The truth of God's word that has victory over the liar and the poser that's coming at you. So this morning, Go in victory in Jesus' name. Thanks for coming to Grace River Church. Love you. God bless.